The section we're about to start is uh, graph sketching. And in this video, we're going to introduce all of the things we need to uh, consider when, when addressing problems that require us to identify the graph or to draw a graph of a function given to you. Also, this is just like a an intro, so this is like a, a preliminary to the, the actual study. Uh, section 4.6. Uh, um, so what we do is just to motivate the 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 procedure with an example. So next time we're going to uh, give us a number of steps that can be formalized into a technique so that whenever you need to graph a function you can just follow the, the these steps and, and, and do a checklist whether you, I mean to make sure that you have all, all everything that is required uh, in order for you to to do the correct graph and, and and portray the function as it is uh, with all the information you have at hand of course I mean because everything here uh, so uh, let me start by mentioning so before that um, let me mention the information about the graph of a given function function f will come from the geometric information geometric information Provided to us by by f prime and f double prime. So two points. So f prime tells us whether f is increasing or decreasing on on a given interval well f double prime tells us about the concavity of f Uh, or what was the same? Um, how the graph of F bends on a given interval. So most of the geometric information is going to come from uh, the first and second derivatives. So let's now. Look at a, an introductory example. So let's consider f of x equals x cubed minus 3x. First thing, I mean, we can do in in for this for this function in particular is to find the roots. I mean, this is not always possible. But in this case, we will be able to do that. So the roots come from finding the zeros of this. So this expression here is the same as x cubed minus 3x, right? So we want to find the zeros. So that gives us that there are three roots, x equals 0, and x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 3. We also know that 1 
is less than the square root of 3 is less than 2 and we know that because 1 is, I mean if we raise the square all sides we get 1 is less than 3 is less than 4 which is true. Now so this is information about the roots so but, but what about critical points? Critical critical points. As we know f of x is a polynomial so critical points are only points where f prime of x is equal to zero and what is f prime? f prime of x is equal to 3x squared minus 3 and this will be equal to zero if and only if so this is equal to 3 times x squared minus 1 so this will be true if and only if x is equal to either plus or minus 1 which are the roots of x squared minus 1 so we have two critical points now and potential inflection points so equals 0 or f double prime not defined where are the points where f double prime is equal to 0 or is not defined well again we have a polynomial so f double prime is always defined so it, we only need to find points where this is equal to 0 f double prime is equal to 0 f double prime uh, at x equal to 6 times x and that is equal to 0 uh, well of course if and only if x is equal to 0 you see let's look at all the all these points are special because something happens here or potentially happens I mean either the function uh, has a local min a local max uh, at the critical point, or maybe it's just uh, a critical point that, had, that doesn't correspond to any of these, uh, of these situations. Um, but uh, nevertheless, it tells us that the graph is locally flat at that particular point. Uh, but knowing the signs of f prime at either side of a critical point tells us whether the function is increasing or decreasing. Uh, and so let's start with the root. So the roots are x equals 0 and x equals plus or minus square root 3. Now it tells us when we cut the uh, x-axis, uh, the critical points are plus or minus 1. And the uh, there's only one place where the f double prime is equal to 0. So w let's look at the real line. So here... Uh, the behavior of um, f, I don't mean, know how uh, f looks on, on its graphs, what the graph of f looks like, uh, depends on the signs of f prime and f double prime. So if we look at this point, so the uh, critical and inflection points uh, and potential inflection points, we have minus 1, 0, and 1. So these two correspond to critical points. And here we have a point where f double prime is equal to zero. Okay, so this gives us a, a few intervals where uh, the um, derivative or the second derivative have a fixed sign so up until you hit minus 1 f prime has a fixed sign right because it's uh, these are the critical points so you can only have changes in sign at minus 1 or 1 so let's uh, try to and how do we find uh, what is the sign of f prime at uh, on a given interval well we just need a test point so let's see so we have minus from minus infinity to minus one. What can we say about f prime? 
f prime we can plug in any value here okay so uh, one acceptable value is minus two and this is equal to three times three minus two squared minus two squared minus three which is equal to nine and this is positive so uh, here we see that uh, in this interval uh, from minus infinity to minus one f prime is positive now um, between minus one and one so between this critical point and the next critical point we plug in uh, anything in between minus one and one zero is one such point which is easy to compute so we plug in and we get three times zero squared minus three which is equal to minus three and this is less than zero so inside this interval over here f prime is negative we use a test point and uh, inside the interval and we know the sign of f prime is fixed between two consecutive critical points so now from one to infinity again we can plug in any values again we uh, that is between two and, and infinity well, between one and infinity in this case two and we get three times two squared minus three which is again nine which is positive one more time so then the sign of f prime here is positive again now what about the f double prime f double prime uh, well we have two two intervals to consider minus infinity to zero and zero to infinity because uh, uh, f double prime is only zero at uh, zero so we plug in any value in between minus infinity and zero so for convenience let's look at what happens at minus one right f double prime minus one is six times minus one which is equal to minus six which is less than zero okay so between zero and infinity we also pick a one point uh, one is in there so we can choose that and f double prime of one is going to be equal to six times one which is six which is positive so between minus infinity and zero f double prime is negative and then uh, uh, from zero to infinity is positive so what is the sign of f double prime so here f double prime double prime here is now it's negative and from 0 to infinity uh, f double prime is positive <coughs> um, all right so then we have uh, we look at all the important points are the, what we call transition points transition points those are points where uh, there's a critical point or a potential uh, inflection point is located so we'll look at all the places where f prime is not defined f prime is equal to zero f double prime is not defined or it is equal to zero so in this um, for this problem we have minus one zero and one right those are the points um, at which something uh, happens so something potentially changes in either in the uh, whether uh, f is increasing or decreasing or the there's a change in, in in concavity so we divide then the the real line accordingly so from minus one to minus infinity to minus one and from minus one to zero then from zero to one and from one to infinity these are all the intervals that contain potential changes uh, okay and and here what do we record to 
the important information about the growth of f is contained in the sine of f prime. So here we obtain that the sine of f prime between minus infinity and, and minus one. Um, so between minus infinity and uh, minus one, sine of f prime is, is it was positive. Remember, so we have a plus sign here. Then from minus one to one it was negative. So in these two intervals, so from minus one to zero, and from zero to one, uh, f prime is negative. And from one to infinity, it is positive. Now, what about the sine of f double prime? So between minus infinity and zero, it's negative. So between minus infinity and minus one is going to be negative. Then from minus one to zero is also going to be negative. And uh, then it becomes positive after uh, zero. So for positive numbers, the second derivative is positive. So we have this positive and positive. In this interval. So we have a um, uh, sign combination here. Tell us that the, the function is um, here. It tells us that the function is increasing because f prime is positive, but the function is concave down inside this interval. The function here in between minus infinity and, and well, minus one and zero is decreasing because the sine of f prime is negative. And the function still can keep down between 0 and 1. Uh, the function is decreasing, but now it is concave up in this region. And then we have that it's increasing again and concave up. And this basically contains all the relevant information um, for us. Uh, we may also. Uh, look at these points and uh, immediately tell whether the, we have a local mean a local mean and local max minus one or one these are the critical points so what happens here at minus one the function was uh, increasing and then it became decreasing right after that so this is a local local max uh, well, on the other hand, so this is uh, x equals negative 1. At x equals 1, the function is going down before x equals 1, and it starts to go up as we move to the right of 1. So this is a local min. We're using the first derivative test. And uh, here, uh, the point 0 we had the function was concave down and it moved to being concave up so this is a point of inflection because of the change in concavity point point of inflection we have a change in concavity here you see uh, the between minus one and zero uh, the function is concave down but between zero and one is concave up so at the point zero is um, point zero uh, is a point of inflection, point where concavity changes. So we characterize uh, everything. We may also want to record certain values. We already know the the roots of f, which may help in some cases. So the roots are uh, square root of, uh, of plus or minus square root of uh, uh, three. And, and zero and we know that square root three is between uh, one and two we also know that um, then minus two is less than minus square root three which is less than minus one and we have the one is less than square root three is less than two which is going to help us in the graph okay in this point in the graph uh, what do we know? Um, so here, of course, at the roots, f is equal to zero. Uh, what the critical points. So at the critical points, the derivative is zero. But what about f? So f of minus one 
what is f of minus 1? So minus 1 is one of the critical points. f of minus 1 is 1 uh, cube minus 3, uh, no, minus 1 cube minus 3 times minus 1. This is minus 1 minus minus, so it's a plus 3, so it's equal to 2. f at 1 is 1 cubed minus 3 times 1, which is equal to 1 minus 3, which is equal to minus 2. So we also know the value, uh, the value of f at the, at the critical points. Okay, so basically uh, this is everything we, we need to know, and we can now collect all this information and put it into the graph of uh, f. So suppose this is minus 1, this is minus 2, this is 1, this is 2. So let me just move this point a little bit. And here, uh, what we know, zero is also a point uh, where something happens. So we know at minus one, uh, the function is takes on the value two. This is one and two, and. Uh, And at 1, it takes on the value minus 2. Um, and these are the critical points. So the function is, uh, is it going to keep down near minus 1, and it's going to keep up at minus 2. Okay, we also know that it has uh, some roots here in between, so this is minus 2. This is the point minus square root 3, and this is the point square root 3 and the function has a 0 over here a 0 over here as well has also 0 here and this is also an inflection point the origin is also an inflection point so right now uh, collecting all the information f prime is increasing between uh, minus infinity and minus 1. So it's going up, but it's going up in a concave down way. So between minus infinity and minus 1. So we put all these points together, so it's going up in a concave down way. So let me just try to do something that looks a little bit more concave down. Uh, okay, so that looks a little bit better and then from minus 1 and 1 uh, and minus 1 and 0 the function is uh, decreasing uh, decreasing the the sine of f prime between minus 1 and 0 is negative it's going down and the function is going to keep down so we still have something like this right so it's going to keep down now between 0 and 1, the function is uh, concave up. Remember that the 0 is an inflection point, but it's still decreasing. So it goes down like this. And then it is increasing from 1 uh, to infinity, and it's concave up. So it does something like this. So it has to pass through the point to the 0 point, so through its root. Oh, it cannot seem to hit the this is something like that and now what happens at infinity so as x goes to plus infinity we know that x cubed minus 3x goes to 
infinity. This is the leading leading term. So we just draw a line like that. So it's going to infinity. And we know the x cube uh, becomes very positive and overpowers 3x because this is just growing linearly. And for the same reason, when x is going to minus infinity, x cubed overpowers minus 3x. It's going to minus infinity much faster than 3x is going to plus infinity. So this whole thing goes to minus, minus infinity. So the graph here uh, uh, is complete. I mean, we collected all the information we could uh, draw from the first and second derivative. Uh, and we um, also saw the asymptotic behavior at infinity. Are there any horizontal asymptotes? Asymptotes? No. Why? Because of this. I mean, the function goes to infinity or to minus infinity. Okay, so this is um, right because the, the the function goes to infinity at one end and it goes to minus infinity at the other. So it doesn't have any horizontal asymptotes. Um, what about vertical? Vertical asymptotes. Totes? No. Either the f is defined everywhere and continuous. And is continuous. So, in order to have um, vertical asymptotes, we need to find a point where um, at least one of the the the, the, the one-sided limits is going to either plus or minus infinity. If the function is continuous at the point, then that cannot be the case because of the, you must be approaching a certain value. So, uh, and this function is a polynomial, so it can never uh, exhibit any behavior like that. Um, so uh, this concludes our, 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 our example. And we see a, uh, more or less I mean, what we're supposed to be doing, how we collect all the information, uh, how we divide the real line into smaller subinterval where something happens or there's a transition. And we call those points, critical points, which are the union of, of, of points where the derivative or second derivative vanish or when they are not defined. Uh, and we um, record the signs and sign combinations. And we, I mean, we can use uh, the information we found to, to try to sketch uh, the graph of, of F. So in the next video, we're going to formalize everything, look at a slightly more complicated example. Uh, in that problem, though, I mean, I already show you how to find the signs of f prime and f double prime inside an interval. We just pick a test point inside the interval. So uh, since the, the problem is going to take me a while, even without computing those uh, values, I just leave it up to you. Uh, I'm just going to record the the sign, the actual signs that I will have obtained by by just plugging in a, a, a point inside those intervals. I mean, uh, I hope from this uh, m more elementary example, uh, it is clear what we have to do, like what we did over here, f double prime at one, to see what happens between zero and infinity. We plugged in uh, one for x to see the sign of f double prime. Uh, uh, because I mean, we know that between zero and infinity, the sign of f double prime is fixed. Because there are no points where f double prime is defined, is not defined after zero, or where it's equal to zero. 
Okay, so um, I will skip only those things, which are kind of, um, I mean, which are things I, I, I trust that you can do on your own. Uh, in the table, I mean, it's going to be a little bit bigger than this. Uh, and then uh, in the video after that, we're going to go over some examples. We're going to skip a few little details uh, that are not that relevant. And once you understand the, the, um, the way in which uh, these kind of problems are supposed to work, um, we'll focus on the essential things for uh, slightly more complicated examples where uh, we don't have a polynomial. Uh, but uh, other m more complicated functions, including natural log or or exponentials. Okay, that's it for now.